Welcome back to the Go Engineer YouTube channel. My name is Enrique Garcia, and I'm a senior simulation specialist here at Go Engineer. In this Quick Tips video, we will take a look at what the minimum gap size and the minimum wall thickness options are, and how to make sure they are available on your SOLIDWORKS flow simulation installation. Before we get started, make sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Here we have a section of square piping that we will explore our main topics on. The setup has been completed and it explored the fluid mechanics of water in the system. We have an inlet mass flow entering on the left hand side resulting in a velocity of about 40 inches per second and is open to the environment on the right hand side of the pipe with a static pressure boundary condition. In the middle of the ducting, we have a very thick obstruction that only lets in about a little more than an eighth of an inch of water through the pipe. And a little further down the length, we have a very thin wall of a tenth of an inch in thickness that's diverting the water, causing an irregular flow distribution at the other end of the pipe. Now, meshing or discretizing your models for a flow simulation analysis is one of the most important phases of setting up a fluids project. Most new users to flow simulation will simply leave the default global mesh settings alone and run their analysis. Here's the outcome of my mesh if I just leave all the settings at default. Notice that we have about two-thirds of an element representing the fluid gap and a slight amount of mesh refinement around the thin wall. This may be okay for an early or preliminary run of the project to start, but I will definitely want more mesh detail around the gap and around the thin wall of the pipe, as this amount of detail will most certainly not give accurate results. I will edit the global mesh setting of the project and explore two general mesh settings that can help add more data and detail to that small gap and thin wall. I'll make sure that under the Type section of the Global Mesh Settings Property Manager, I have the automatic type selected. The first setting I want to review is called the Minimum Gap Size option. This can be turned on by selecting the icon, and the fill-in field will be editable. In order to be able to detect and successfully mesh all the important fluid regions in the project, Flow Simulation will take into account certain aspects of the model size and setup, such as the overall model dimensions, the size of the faces you use to create boundary conditions with, or the computational domain size, to come up with what it thinks a minimum amount of detail the mesh should have in its smallest regions. However, that may not yield enough detail as we see here with our coarser looking mesh within our small gap region. As a consequence, the minimum gap size option can influence and increase the amount of detail the flow project thinks it should respect in these small areas by typing it in in the fill in field. Here we will type in the size of 0.15 inches, which is the length of our gap in the model. When we mesh the model next, we should see more detail around the gap region. Next, let's talk about the Enable Minimum Wall Thickness setting. This setting is turned off by default on new installations of SOLIDWORKS Flow Simulation, but can be easily turned on from the Flow Simulation options, under General Options, Show Hide Wall Thickness. Once I click the icon to activate it, the fill-in field will also be editable. The minimum wall thickness option will allow you to influence the amount of detail given to small detail-oriented features such as small or thin structures like walls or thin fins on a heatsink. I will type in the thickness of the thin wall on our model, which is 0.1 inches, and I will click OK to close the Global Mesh Settings Property Manager. Before we continue, I just wanted to mention a few tips or gotchas regarding these two settings. Regarding the minimum wall thickness setting, make sure that the value is equal to or less than the minimum gap size value, or it'll influence a whole lot of nothing for your thin walls and features. Also, just in general, when making changes to your model or settings in flow simulation, and before editing your global mesh settings, it's a good idea to rebuild your project to update its parametric connections to the CAD model, and to update the default or internal minimum gap size, or other mesh settings. I have opened a completed project here, where I have meshed and run with these new settings, and I can now see the change in the mesh around the small gap and the thin wall. I see more detail of about two elements across the gap, and a further mesh refinement at the thin wall. Also, regarding the calculated results, the maximum velocity around the gap has increased from about 200 inches per second to about 265, thanks to the added detail from the calculation notes in the region. 
Speaking of detail, as a best practice for more important gaps, I like to have anywhere from three to five elements around those gap regions. So let me show you a bonus setting in the Global Mesh settings to help you with this. Under the Gap and Thin Wall settings, there's a checkbox that reads Advanced Channel Refinement. This setting, when enabled along with the Gap setting, will increase the number of elements even more in those regions. The way it determines the amount of detail is due to either the position of the Tolerance Level slider under the Advanced Refinement section, which is under the Manual Mesh settings in the Property Manager, or by the position in the slider of the level of initial mesh, which for us is set to the default of three. Now that can be a lot to remember, so to make it simple, all we need to know is that we will get even more detail where we have small gaps and channels with this setting. Let me click on it and click close to the property manager once again. I've opened a completed project here where I've meshed and run with the advanced channel refinement setting, and I can see a further change in and around the small gap. I see detail of about five elements across this gap. With regards to the thin wall, that looks to be about the same. Also, regarding the calculated results, the maximum velocity around the gap has increased from about 265 inches per second to about 280, thanks to the added detail from the calculation nodes in the region. It looks like we may possibly be converging in that region with the amount of detail. To summarize, I've shown you how to quickly increase the level of detail in your meshes with flow simulation. The only drawback to using these settings is that since they are global settings, we also can have additional mesh concentrations in areas that may not need additional detail, such as the corners of the inlet and outlet of the pipe in our example. If this were a larger model and a more important consideration, then we may have to look to a more specialized approach to mesh refinement, such as inserting a local mesh. Overall, the minimum gap size and minimum wall thickness settings allows us to more easily and accurately simulate the flow of fluids through important and smaller regions of our designs, potentially optimizing the design and improving performance or reducing costs, making flow simulation a valuable asset to any design or engineering project. This has been Enrique Garcia with Go Engineer. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this quick tips video helpful. If you did, please subscribe and leave us a comment below. If you have a topic you'd like us to cover in a future video, visit our website at GoEngineer.com for access to professional training, upcoming events, and more from your number one online technical resource. Thanks for stopping by. See you on the next one.